Hello and welcome to Spirit and Law episode 1. Now because this is the first episode it's going to be one of those run throughs where we're going to see how it goes and um, I want your comments. It's going to be what you want to listen to and what you want to hear about and if anyone has any questions at the end and they want to submit it via YouTube or even the Twitter site which I'm setting up right now for Spirit and Law please feel free to do so. So let's get started. Today we're actually going to dive into a creature that's kind of been circulating a long time and I think about a few weeks ago on there's like a hashtag on Twitter for hashtag folklore Thursday. I actually did a piece on the Kelpie because it just fascinates me what exactly it is and what it does and I've always kind of been fascinated with horses so I thought why not let's just let's just uncover exactly what a kelpie is and what does it do in a sense. So the kelpie, as it's known as, as or the water horse, it's kind of a Celtic name for it, so kelpie translates as water horse. It's always had such a bad reputation and it's always kind of considered up in the highlands, up in the lakes and the rivers where it's been seen in lots of uh, art and literature across the years. So what we're going to start talking about is what forms does it take? What exactly does this beautiful black horse do? (laughs) So, as I said, its main form is a water horse, but it can also be like a lady or a young maiden. The only way to tell the difference between a young maiden and a kelpie in the shape or shape-shifting form of a young maiden is she's going to have some maybe seaweed in her hair. (laughs) <laughs> and she still has her hooves she like, still has the horse hooves of a kelpie which is going to be a huge giveaway and uh, creepily they're like reversed hooves so a young maiden some seaweed in her hair and some reversed hooves so you can't exactly take her dancing on the night down the pub because you're going to get some weird looks <laughs> mm-hmm. so there's been quite a lot of experiences and sightings over history I think the first one emerged before, I'm going to say, 1759. And this was in an ode by William Collin about such a creature and such a form known as the Kelpie. Now, as it kept circulating through the years and stuff, and it started to become a huge thing, like what exactly is the Kelpie? So much in a a part of Scotland I can't remember what it is but they actually do have two sculptures of said kelpie so it's a horse's head that looks like a kelpie and even in 1990 they actually made a children's book called the water horse which talks all about the kelpie which is really ironic because children were the kelpie's favorite victim because they were easy to kind of control and use their hypnotic powers on And let's just say maybe the Kelpie has a taste for the kids. So one of the earliest stories, here's what happens. There will be a child that goes to the lake or so forth. They're just strolling along, minding their own business. Maybe they're on their own. Maybe they're with a few friends. And then in the distance, they kind of catch sight of this lonely horse just kind of in the river or lakeside because some sightings have actually said that the Kelpie can walk off on land and out of the rivers and lakes. So anyway, back to the story. So the kids are walking along, they're like minding their own business, and then there's a random horse that's just chilling. They go over to the horse and like, oh wow, it's got a, a harness on and everything, and it's kind of goading us. Do you want to ride the horse? So there's going to be one kid that probably doesn't want to ride a random horse in a lake. It seems a bit strange. But the other kids are all going to jump on the harness and jump on this saddle and just be like, yes, ride us into the distance. But the minute they do, um, (laughs) they're going to get stuck to the saddle completely and they're not going to be able to move. And at the same time, it's going to have that hypnotic powers that snakes do when they kind of do that with their prey. You know, I'm trying to think in Jungle Book. (laughs) <laughs> great great fiction right here these are real facts in jungle book when um the main snake i can't remember the name basically brings its prey closer to it before killing it so this is kind of what the kelpie does 
they're all kind of stuck. They're all kind of not really screaming, except the one kid that's watching that said I shouldn't have gone on the horse. They're just watching all their friends be murdered, almost. Um, the only way you can probably get off a Kelpie would be to cut your hands or your legs off or the saddle off. But let's be honest, they're going to be hypnotised and they're not going to have enough time to cut their arms or legs off before the Kelpie will just take them down to the bottom of the lake and just tragically drown them. That's what the Kelpie does. It's like, come hither and drown. <laughs> so um, in some depictions of the Kelpie, it's actually been seen as less of a grim story, although the grim story is most popular. Because, you know, it's going to have more attraction than, oh, it's actually a really nice horse. Don't worry, have a nice pet. Don't mind it. It's not going to eat your face off. It does have eyes of hell and it, it's, it's, it's a bit gnarly, but, you know, it's cool. <laughs> so in some of those good cases, the creature's actually been seen to warn children of dangers, don't go into the waters, and also to make women weary of handsome strangers. But let's be honest, it probably just loves to dunk everyone it sees. And um, this can be similar when it turns into this gorgeous lady, which is known to do a lot of time and come out of the lake and attract men into the waters with mainly its singing. Now that sounds very familiar. It sounds very much like it might be a mermaid. This is why it probably has some common commonalities between the two. Or any siren of the deep. It uses its siren, calls it once again into the water, and before you know it, the guy is drowned. Or the lady. It might have different choices. So most sightings and writings consist of the Kelpie being seen and located, ironically, in one of the most famous places in Scotland, Loch Ness. Which ties in really nicely with the unknown Loch Ness monster. Now, do you guys think it could look very similar to the Kelpie? Because I do. It might have a bit of a resemblance. From such a distance, maybe people confuse the two. And it could still be there because recently I saw some sightings or I saw articles basically saying that there is still a Loch Ness Monster. Could this still be the Kelpie? Could this all tie in beautifully with one another and knowing that this might be the same thing would you ever go and swim in the Loch Ness River lake I should say <laughs> so if you ever do come across a kelpie how exactly do you kill it because I want to know if this ever happens in my life or in your life what do we do if we come across this maiden with seaweed in her hair that looks like she's a little bit drunk or a random horse that's just chilling in the river is it a random horse that you want to go ride or is it something worse? So, things to kill it with. The classic silver bullets. Straight in the heart, pow, and it is gone. Another way is to see if you can possibly get the harness and the saddle off the Kelpie. But I mean, it's a huge gigantic horse. How are you going to be able to straddle it in time or, or just, just rip off everything and just throw it away? In some cases, and some writings, it's said that some person called Colin once encountered such Kelpie and actually threw off the harness and it only had 48 hours to live. <sighs> Tragic. <laughs> so yeah, I don't, I don't know what I'd do if I ever saw a Kelpie. I think I'd probably run away. I wouldn't want to go and chill and relax with it. And uh, I don't know, I think I'm going to be a bit not curious but skeptical when I put my foot in the highlands if I ever travel up to Scotland or ever hear a random siren call in the distance what would you do if you ever encountered a kelpie do you think a kelpie is real do you think it's all fiction and I want to hear what you have to say about it thanks for listening to this podcast and submit any questions to me for next time or any topics you want to hear until next time followers see you then Spirit.